Rome, the eternal city. Ever beautiful, never more attractive than it is today. Its mellowed stone and muted colors, testimony that time has been a friend. The architects of a distant past use their skills well, planning and building with inspiration for a future which, like the fountains, would flow till eternity. Elegant squares of grand proportions seem to sparkle in the hot Roman sunshine. A sunshine which has made a city of life in the open air, where water is dispensed in cascades to bring cooling thoughts to those who live or come here. Perhaps the sculptors never planned their art for the use to which their modern day admirers put it, but nobody minds now. In Rome, one can escape and relax. The fountains of Rome are monuments to the glorification of water conceived in beauty to grace the many wonders of the ancient city. When the sun is high, it's time to stop. Rest a while. Take a glass of rich Italian wine and savor the atmosphere of the exciting city and its life which flows by the many pavement cafes. There's plenty of time. After all, Rome wasn't built in a day. But like the Colosseum, it will remain to remind of those who did build it. It took advanced thinkers to construct this once place of horrors. The entire range of Greek architectural grace was incorporated in this slaughterhouse, where gladiators fought to the death and Christians faced starved lions. There's irony in the fact that close to the Colosseum, with its pagan memories, is Constantine's arch, the memorial to the first Christian emperor. There's a saying that all roads lead to Rome. Well, in this jet age, that's not strictly true. Admittedly, Rome is one of the busiest crossroads of air transport in the world, a kind of pivot between the west and the east. But it's also the hub of a nation waiting to be explored. The roads which lead into the Eternal City also fan outwards. The planes which bring their countless annual thousands to Rome set their passengers down on the threshold of an experience whose doors open to reveal an entire welcoming land. A land rich in history, culture and places of wonder. Venice is one such place. They say the beautiful old city is slowly sinking, that the water is inching its way higher each year that the lapping tide and wash of countless boats and gondolas is to blame. But in this city, where the streets themselves are resurfaced with each tide, Venetians, with typical what will be, will be fatalism, carry on as they've always done, gliding along their romantic watery thoroughfares and enjoying life as it comes. For them and all who visit the city of waterways, Venice is far from sunny. Motorboats and gondolas work amicably, ferrying passengers for a few lira to memorable spots which the city's pigeons are pleased to share for the price of a small handout. St. Mark's Square is one of them. The pigeons here are amongst the friendliest in the world. The millions of people who come to see the splendor of the city's most striking places are no reason for them to worry. Together, St. Mark's and the Ducal Palace are superb examples of man's creation. Architectural beauty is everywhere, and it too is graced by the works of masters. Time means little in such an artistic city, yet even time itself could not escape the influence and ingenuity of those seeking to beautify it. When 
one stands in St. Mark's Square, the problem is where to look first and what to look at first, for here the artists excel themselves. They still try today. In the cafes, those with time to spare take their ease. But for the many painters who come to Venice, not a moment can be wasted. Away from the show places of Venice, there is the other city, one of narrow streets, stairways and bazaars, an intriguing centre of minor commerce, where can be bought anything from a hot dog to a precious jewel, and practically everything else which comes between those categories. Actually, the seafood is exceptionally good and plentiful. <laughs> Venetian jewellery is almost as famous as its glassware. Venice is certainly a city for trinket hunters. But for all its beauty as a city, the mention of Venice immediately conjures up visions of gondolas, with every reason. Every year, the famous Venice regatta is a very notable event on the local calendar. Well, not only is it a spectacular occasion, it's also a holiday. The regatta dates back more than seven centuries. It was always considered a most important happening in the days of the ancient Venetian Republic. And in Venice, traditions die hard. On this day every year, boats and gondolas are decked with displays of finery which bring bursts of new colours to the canals. In the afternoon until late into the night, the processions of decorated craft glide up and down the Grand Canal, as they have done for centuries past, to mark this Venetian event. An event as timeless as this remarkable city of canals and bridges, which with good reason is called Queen of the Adriatic.